Hey, what's up guys? It's Texas Summer talking to you here. And I'm back. I'm back at my normal studio and I'm very, very excited to bring you even more videos now that I'm back to my normal life. But yes, in today's video, I want to talk about why my M1 Max MacBook Pro still is and is the best option for you out there. Yes, I've done a ton of videos on this and I've done my six months review on that computer. But what I wasn't expecting was for Apple to release the update for Final Cut Pro. But they have done it and so now we got the results. Max they did an amazing video explaining what were the differences between the M1 Max Max Studio and the M1 Ultra Max Studio 24 core, 48 core and 64 core. So yes, that's a very important video to take by and yes, I will take by my performance steps from that video and I will explain to you why I do still think this MacBook Pro is the better option for all of you guys because no matter what you do I do think, still think that this laptop is the better option for 99% of you guys and why I do still think that every time and every month that passes this MacBook Pro turns out to be the best Mac available in terms of price per performance per hardware that received on the Mac lineup. So yes, this is my opinion, of course I'm a little bit subjective just because it's my computer, it was my decision, but at the end of the day, let me tell you, this is an amazing computer and you will love it if you want to buy one. Of course, this is another Mac video and you are already thinking, gosh, you did about another Mac video. Wait, I did two videos not relatable to the Mac. I did an iPhone 14 video and the other one, I think it was about the Mac, the Mac Pro that is coming, so it's not about the Mac, MacBook Pro, but yes. If you want a more different types of content, let me know in the comments down below. Should I get the AirPods Max to try to review? Should I get more iPhones, more iPads to review? Let me know in the comments down below what you want. And of course, should I try another Android phone? Of course not, I will not subject myself to another torture. So no further ado, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. And of course, leave a like if you can and comment down below for the algorithm. As you know, my M1 Max MacBook Pro is now six months and a half old. Yes, that's almost more than half a year. And let me tell you, I'm very happy with it. But in the last week, something happened that changed the whole circumstances of the Mac. We were expecting an upgrade for Final Cut Pro and we got it. This upgrade was <laughs> revealing itself to be kind of a disappointment just because we finally got the upgrade that supposedly will improve the M1 Ultra's performance on Final Cut Pro and guess what? It didn't. The performance on the Final Cut Pro timeline and exporting times has been, well, disappointing to say the least. Yes, the M1 Ultra is faster, but for the differences in pricing that you are getting, which is double the pricing in terms of the M1 Max base model Max Studio, it doesn't show it's double the performance. Like, for example, you pay $4,000 for the base M1 Ultra and you don't get double the performance. Max Tech did a lot, of, a lot of tests that you can see on the screen now and they, they are very revealing. They see exactly how benchmarking shows you. And as you can see, the M1 Max Mac Studio is way better in terms of price per performance than the M1 Ultra. Of course, the M1 Ultra performs a little bit better in some tasks and even in other tasks shows a 30% jump over the M1 Max Mac Studio. But you have to think yourselves, do you really need that type of performance for that price? Yes, that's a very expensive computer. And that's why I'm here to tell you why the M1 Max chip is my favorite chip on the Apple lineup right now, even better than the M1 Ultra. Just because of the, its price and price of entry and of course, why the performance is so incredible. In today's video, I was telling you that I was fo focusing on my MacBook Pro and I will, but I wanna also touch on the fact that I, my M1 Max MacBook Pro has been so incredible, and not just because of the hardware that it comes out, but because of the chip. It, the, the M1 Max chip has been revealing itself to be the best chip overall, just because the performance jump from the M1 and the M1 Pro is significant. They, co they consider itself to be a good scaling in terms of it was almost double, double the performance on the M1 Pro. And yes, it was an amazing scaling. The price wasn't that much more than the M1 Pro. And the M1 Max finally revealed itself to be the best price per performance on the Mac lineup in terms of Apple Silicon. For me, in my opinion, the best Apple Silicon ever to be built. Yes, not just because it's the most powerful one, it isn't. The M1 Ultra is way powerful. And of course, we will be getting now in WWDC another chip with a Mac Pro, which will be even more powerful than the M1 Ultra. So 
Yes, the M1 Max is not the most powerful chip on the Apple liner, but that doesn't matter. As you know, the M1 Max chip comes in very different forms and factors because it comes on the Mac Studio, which is a desktop, and it comes on a laptop, which is the Mac Pro. You can get it on a 14 inch size, a 16 inch size, and a desktop computer. We cannot get it on an all in one, but I'm expecting Apple to release the iMac Pro with the M1 Max chip. And if they do, I will be very, very happy. And I won't care as much if they do release an M1 Ultra version, just because the M1 Ultra revealed itself to be kind of a disappointment in 95 or 98 percent of the tasks and almost not necessary in optimized apps. Because the Vinci result also showed itself to be the most optimized. Um, editing software right now even better than Final Cut Pro and when you are looking at those results you can see that AM on Ultra doesn't justify itself. One minute that you are saving, I mean it starts to get to diminishing returns while upgrading and scaling up your uh, types of course. Of course right now we just we are just adding more course, more M1 course on top of each other and so the performance of ev every single core is not improving, we're just adding more and so the performance of them all summed up is becoming larger individually by itself the performance is not improving so yes that's why i'm very excited for the new m2 cores that are probably coming on the wdc but that's a video for another day and right now i want to focus on my m1 max macbook pro which has the m1 max chip with the 32 gigabytes of ram and the 32 gpu cores this is in my opinion the best version of apple silicon ever because it's in terms of performance it's very very powerful it's way cheaper than the m1 ultra it uh, like spends a lot less watts than the Mon Ultra and of course comes in very different form factors and I'm expecting to come in even more like the iMac Pro. So yes, the M1 Max chip is my favorite. Do I prefer the 24 core G Intel GPU op option? I mean, it depends. Do you need the GPU? If you do need the GPU, I do recommend going for the 32 GPU cores. It's, it's an extra $100, I think, and it makes a difference. If you don't really need the GPU, you're just like CPU focused editing in terms of editing code, writing code, Xcode, then go for the 24 core, you won't need the GPU performance after all, but if you really need a little bit more GPU than you're actually thinking, then you should spend the extra money and just get the 32 GPU core option. It's the most powerful M1 Max out there and I do think it's worth it. Of course, the best form factor in my opinion is this M1 Max Mac Pro, just because the 16 inch form factor is amazing. It has an amazing hardware in terms of keyboard, ports, IO, it has the three Thunderbolt 4 ports, it has one HDMI, one SD card slot, one MagSafe port, it has amazing speakers, amazing keyboard, amazing trackpad, and of course, it has this amazing and gorgeous mini LED 16 inch ProMotion display. Yes, there's no other display like this on the Apple lineup. The, the most close you can find is on the iPad Pros, the M1 iPad Pros, with the 13 inch mini LED iPad Pro. Yes, that's promotion. Yes, that's mini LED, but no, it's not as good. It has some blooming products that these problems are very easy to find if you turn off your lights and look for them in a YouTube video, but watching content, you will almost not notice on the Mac Pro, while on the <laughs> iPad Pro, you will. Trust me, that, that those panels weren't as good as these ones. So yes, this has, in my opinion, the best display ever. This has, in my opinion, the best keyboard, mouse, and speaker combo ever on a laptop. The build and design is amazing. It's a little bit chunky, it's a little bit heavy, if you consider that this is a laptop. But again, you, are, you have to sacrifice stuff if you wanna get this amazing battery life, which is 100 watts, the most heavy and most powerful battery you can turn on and leave on a plane. So yes, this is very, very, very complete laptop. And if you really want my verdict on this Macro Pro, think about it. You're spending $3,500, but you, got, you are getting, in my opinion, the best chip ever on a laptop and on a desktop, let's be honest. You're getting the best laptop hardware out there and you are getting the best screen out there in general, like ever. So how can you find that all of that for $3,500? First, find me an M1 Max chip, which is completely maxed out, 32 GPU cores, 64 gigabytes of RAM if you want to, 32 GPU cores or 32 gigabytes of RAM in this case. If, if I wanted, I could spend the extra 400 euros or dollars and get the, the extra 32 GPU or even the 32 gigabytes of RAM, but I didn't want to, I didn't need it, but if you do, then find me the best M1 Max chip or the cheapest M1, M1 Max chip that you can find, then pick that up, which right now is the M1 Max Max Studio for $19.99, and get me this amazing screen, this amazing keyboard, this amazing mouse, these amazing speakers, and bring me closer and tell me how much does it cost. 
well, if you want a screen like this, you have at least to settle with, I don't know, I, surely I can find a screen as good as this with promotion. Okay, you can sacrifice some promotion and get on resolution like the Polisplex XCR, but that's $6,000 and your argument is that there. If you want a cheaper screen, which is 5K, uh, even better resolution than this one, which is 2.7K, but you lose the mini LED factor and you lose the promotion. So you cannot find a display that features all of these characteristics, promotion, mini LED, having uh, amazing color correct correction, having amazing colors, amazing contrast ratio, amazing brightness. You cannot find it anywhere. So yes, I'm telling you, this screen, incredible. And of course, at the end, you have to pay for Touch ID, you have to pay the, for a Magic Keyboard, which is $200, you have to pay for the Magic Mouse or even the Magic Trackpad to get this trackpad experience, which is $150. Then, if you add up all of that, you will reach a price that is higher than this MacBook Pro. And your setup that you just bought is not portable. Yes, this M1 Max chip in this MacBook Pro 16-inch, it's the perfect combo, it's the perfect laptop, and... Gosh, I'm so happy that I've bought it. You can talk about with other YouTubers, you can ask them on the comment section, what do they think about their M1 Max MacBook Pro 16 inch, ask Mr. Rosa Boss, ask, ask MKHD, ask Max Tech, ask um, Drew from Telosive Tech, you can ask them all. They will tell you that they love their computers. Do you want a smaller computer? Get the 14 inch. That's the better option for you. The M1 Max 14 inch is also an amazing option. The battery is a little bit worse. Hey, sorry for that, <laughs> that code was Quite impressive, but my camera got corrupted, my video got strange, and the, the auto got messed up, so I had to cut while editing. So I do have to finish this video like this. So like I was telling you guys, the 14-inch MacBook Pro is an amazing option if you want to get the smallest but cheapest way for the M1 Max chip, but also it's portable. So yes, you have to balance out these things. Of course, in my opinion, like I was telling you, the M1 Max chip is the most powerful but cheapest version. Do you get me what I was trying to say? Like, Demon Max, in terms of price, is expensive, but the performance matches up the price, and so it becomes cheap. So, there's a lot of form factors you can get Demon Max also, like the Max Studio, like the 14-inch MacBook Pro, the 16-inch MacBook Pro, and in the future, I expect the iMac Pro. So, yes, like I was telling you, Demon Max chip, in my opinion, is the most versatile, the most performing, and the cheapest, most powerful on Apple Silicon lineup, because... The chart just prove it. The real world performance just proves it. The Mon Ultra is just too expensive and not powerful enough. And also, I think that will apply to the Mac Pro. Those two chips are more for the prosumer part of the market, which is that extra 1% of the prosumer market that needs that most amount of performance. Right now, I don't think that you will need it. And so I'm recommending for you guys the Mon Max chip. And you just have to choose the form factor now. I helped you choose the chip now just choose the form factor if you want my opinion i do think that the 16 inch version of the computer is the best option don't get the mac studio you will miss out on a lot of stuff like the amazing speakers microphone system and screen and of course i do think the 16 inch bigger big bigger screen is just killing me it's just an amazing screen amazing laptop amazing battery life by the way you will be happy with the 14 inch or the 16 inch just choose why you will want a laptop, neither a desktop, and of course, later than that, choose the size of your laptop. I do think it's very important for you to decide. The 16 inch is a lot bigger, a lot bulkier, but the screen is bigger and the battery life is way better. It's not as thermally constrained, and at the end of the day, in my opinion, it's the best option. But what is your option? And leave that on the comments down below. And also, don't forget to leave your opinion on my video i do think it was kind of long but i do think it's worth making just because i'm in love with this m1 max chip and now that we have the new final cut pro version it shows and puts on the, the light spot the m1 ultra's weaknesses and so i needed to make this video to show you guys that the m1 max in my opinion is the best version for the apple silicon chip let me know in the comments down below your opinion and of course don't forget to leave a like and subscribe while you're at it because this helps with the algorithm this helps my channel grow and I'm very, very happy that it happens. And I really appreciate your support. It was thanks for talking to you guys. Bye.